Okay, this file that we're viewing right now is what I use for my foreman. Usually print out a couple hundred at a time and then just can hand them out on every project. Uh, we will not hand these out with really small projects like little one day jobs, typically, unless it's, you know, some kind of something tricky or maybe some dangerous spots where we want to document what the danger is. But this job site, Forms, Guides, and Policies. So this is like a quick reference for my company, uh, for some safety stuff, just to kind of cover my butt. But then also there are forms in here that the foreman would actually use daily. There are some forms in here that the foreman would use at the start of a project. Now this is set up, you know, mine has my company name and license number, address, phone numbers. We've got our own logo, company logo on every page. This is all set up in the header. So you can just go in and edit these however you want to. But everything is set up and laid out so it can just be printed. We print these into booklets and it is a front and back printed booklet just on regular paper. We don't do anything expensive. They look nice though. Uh, we just do a staple in the center, double-sided pages, a little bit thicker than uh, the cheapest paper, but not, not very expensive. So here's table of contents. So we've got our job, job arrival checklist. Use this protocol checks, checklist when you start every project. Pre-safety, uh, pre-project safety inspection. Can't read today. So we'll go through each of these, but this has uh, basically items to check in before you start the project. Or job site safety analysis. Use this for every project. So when it comes to workers comp, they want to see that you're doing this on all your projects. And you'll see why in a minute. Job start checklist. This is basically going through and seeing if we have any existing damages. That way we can uh, mark it, bring it to the client's attention. That way we're not blamed for it later. During the job checklist, job completion checklist, project daily update form. This one is essential for me. So our foreman fills this out. They give me that update every day through text or email. They can just send a picture of this. This is essential for me. Equipment purchasing form. So if my guys are gonna buy something other than just basic sundries, they've gotta fill this form out. Um, that way I start tracking the equipment. It goes onto a spreadsheet. We track it if it's ladders, if it's spray equipment, guns, anything. It goes onto our spreadsheet and we start tracking from the date it was purchased. We track service on it, the whole deal. Trip charge and reimbursement form. Now my guys will do uh, trips to the store throughout the week and we don't do a mileage thing, but we do, if you're on the clock, we do five bucks to cover your gas. You know, I mean, the store is like two miles away. So we'll do five bucks. If it's before work hours, it'll be 15 bucks. And same deal, two miles from the shop or from the project, stop and pick up paint on your way there. Uh, you know, show up 15 minutes early, 15 bucks is what we pay for that. If it's, if they're further away, we'll update it or change it, but that's generally works pretty well. Materials and paint order form. So this is where they're going to put together paint orders. If they need something, they're going to fill out this form, take a picture of it, send it over. Employee quick policy. This has some of our basic standards and guidelines, employee complaint form. So if there's an employee that wants to complain about a foreman or about a client or whatever, they're going to fill out this form. Foreman disciplinary action form. If one of the painters on site or, um, you know, an apprentice is not following directions and they have to be told over and over, or if they're doing something that's not safe, the form is going to fill out one of these forms. This is just so we stay on top of any issues. We get ahead of them. Inventory checkout, check-in instructions. So when you take equipment from another foreman, from another job site, you take it from the shop, uh, you're signing that in now. Company scorecard. How did the company management make this project harder or easier? Um, this is basically our painters are gonna say, well, you forgot about the wrought iron and the door and whatever else. So it made it difficult or we didn't have the colors in time. So it made it difficult. Employee scorecard. Our foreman will fill this out for the 
about how the employees did. If they were great, if uh, two of them were great, one was terrible, if they were all terrible, and why. Client scorecard. How did our client treat everybody? Were they easy to work with? Were they really hard to work with? Were they a huge pain in the ass? Um, we get a client scorecard. Uh, applications. So we have applications in this because we just get asked constantly, hey, are you guys hiring? And so our foreman has the ability to just tear out a couple pages. They can fill out an app, turn it in. Emergency medical plan. So this is basically instructions. If somebody cuts their hand open on a job site, falls off the ladder, um, this is a quick little guide on uh, how to. And then local urgent care. So we have, I don't know, six or 10 different urgent cares listed around the job sites where we work. So if an accident happens, foreman can flip to the back of the page or back of the book and see urgent cares, make phone calls, they have addresses there, whatever. I'll go to that one first because that one's pretty pretty important. We've only had to use it a couple times, thankfully, but nice to have it there in those kind of scenarios. Okay, so here we've got two, four, six, eight, nine of them. So Irvine, Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, Anaheim, Santa Ana, Tustin, Orange, Long Beach. This basically covers um, any area we're going to be working. It's going to be pretty close by. Um, emergency medical plan, that's the one I just went over. So in case of an accident, report a supervisor immediately to print an extent of the injury. Um, you can go through it and read this on your own. But this is basically we're filling out an incident report. Witness, we need all this stuff for workers' comp. So it's not only like a good place to keep it in case anyone's freaking out, we just have some instructions, uh, but also we do need that uh, reported and filled out that way for our workers' comp. All right, table of contents, job site arrival. Now you can change this and make it be whatever you want it to be add stuff in, take stuff out. Um, these are all basics on what, you know, most of my guys are not even gonna refer to this, to be honest. But when I'm training someone, if someone is just kind of starting to manage projects, I want them to refer to this and check off boxes, right? We're identifying where the colors are gonna be painted, where which finishes are going where, any adhesion issues, you know, are we gonna have, um, uh, wood floors we're taping to. We have water base peeling off of oil. Identify our masking needs, what we need to cover, what we need to be careful with. Which furniture we need to move. Um, safe place for leaving equipment overnight. You know, do we have a, a staging area? Pilot lights and power. Are we spraying any kind of chemicals or anything like that? Are we going to be doing an epoxy garage floor in a garage that has a water heater? Um, other safety issues, scaffolding, slopes, hard to reach angles, uh, our safety inspection that gets done every project. So that has to get done. Um, materials list the first day, anything you need to complete the job within the timeline. So this one, it goes back to our, we have another page for this for our orders. Here, we just have a quick checklist of the things that you're gonna need for a project. So just make sure you have them. Pre-project safety inspection form, complete at the start of every project. Okay, general work here is neat and orderly. A lot of this stuff is like stolen from state fund workers comp um, standards, right? We need to have a place for trash. We need to have a place for urgent care. We need to know where it is. We need to have a neat and orderly work area. Uh, we need to have access to water, first aid kit. Walk the property, identify all potential areas of issue or concern. So this stuff will actually go through and fill out on our job safety analysis. This one is where we're going to um, put in our project name, our date, inspector, location, project type. And then we're gonna put in our notes for uh, our potential hazards and our steps, preventative measures. So our basic steps for an exterior power wash, Sanding, scraping, patching, priming, spray painting, um, using ladders, brushwork, you know, so potential hazards, we're gonna fill this out every time. For power washing is uh, tripping and falling, uh, shooting yourself with water, right? Like 
uh, spraying uh, on a wet ladder. And then we're gonna put in our preventive measures. So there's just every project, working from ladders, potential hazards, falling off a ladder, ladder sliding out, preventative measures, um, set the claws on the feet on the ladder, make sure the uh, ladder is stable, have someone hold it. Sanding, scraping, patching, potential hazards, uh, dust in your eyes, preventative measures, goggles, and a mask. Right, so we just fill one of these out every single time. All the employees are gonna put their name on it, they're gonna sign it, and they're gonna date it. So everybody knows what the hazards are, everybody knows what all of our basic steps are, and everybody knows what our preventative measures are. Okay, so if somebody is sanding here and they're not wearing a mask and they get stuff in their eyes and have to go to the doctors, we're gonna to refer to this and say, hey, they knew what the precaution was, they didn't do it, um, they had the potential hazard happen to them. They signed this, dated it, everything. What else, what more can we do, right? They'll still say we, we need to make them wear goggles and masks, but whatever. Okay, job start checklist. This is going to be the same kind of thing where our foremen, for the most part, don't need to check this. Um, but we do want to have them check for paint and damage mistakes, okay? Which they do anyway. All of my lead guys know that we don't want to get blamed for anything. So if we've got any damage on floors, weather stripping, glass or window trims, it's just like the basic checklist, but kind of covers most of the things that'll be wrong. Um, and then did we damage anything? Right? I still handle this stuff. Um, so did we damage anything? If so, please tell John immediately. Right? Maybe we uh, tore a weather stripping, uh, scratched a piece of glass, um, dented a, a fixture, whatever. I want to know immediately because I want to get ahead of it immediately. During the job checklist, these are just do's and don'ts, like really simple, basic stuff, but you never know. We don't dump any dirty water in toilets, grass, dirt, we take it to our shop. Don't dump anywhere. There are different parts of the country where it's not a big deal and people don't worry about it if you you know dump your dirty paint water in some dirt and just let it dry out i don't think that's actually bad but people here would freak out if you did that all right um job completion checklist same thing it's like super basic stuff if you're newer to a uh, foreman position you're going to go through and check all this stuff off and guys that are have been here for a long time don't need to do that now this one, everybody has to do a uh, daily update form. So at the end of the day, we need form and name, project name, date. What did we work on today? What are we going to work on tomorrow? Do we need any equipment supplies for tomorrow or the, for the rest of the project? If so what do we need? Are we on track to finish on time? If not, when do you think we'll finish? So everybody gets a uh, completion date that we're aiming for or an amount of hours. So if they think at any point in the project, we're not going to finish. So let's say that date is Thursday here. If Monday, they think, oh, yeah, we should be on time for finishing Thursday. Tuesday, oh, yeah, we should be on time for finishing Thursday. Wednesday, we're definitely not going to finish on Thursday. Uh, I think we'll finish on Friday. Then this, them filling this out that way is going to prompt me to call them because I'm going to say, all right, what's the deal? Why aren't we going to finish on time? But I also use this to give an update to my client at the end of the day. I'll send them a quick email, one or two sentences, and that's it. For them, it feels like I'm an amazing contractor. I keep them in the loop and check in with them every day. For me, I need this so I can work on my scheduling. If we can use a few less guys, need more guys, whatever it is. And then give a quick update to the client. Equipment purchase form, uh, pretty basic. I mean, name, purpose, date, description, job name, cost, approved by, employee signature, approval signature, trip charge and reimbursement form, same thing, also pretty basic. We're gonna have date, trip location, uh, the client's name, the fee, and who it's approved by. Pay material order form. So this one um, we're gonna have, so normally we'll put together all these orders before the project even starts. 
but this would be like if you get there on day one you're like all right i need a four pack of blue tape i need a sprayer i need whatever and then your paint order is going to go in here so we usually have a couple copies of this page and they can just write in here and take a picture send it over employee quick policy guide so this has like basic uh rules in here for being on the project expectations workplace safety no harassing no drugs or alcohol no violence uh employee complaint form employee wishes to file a grievance must fill out this form completely and submit it to his or her principal or immediate supervisor form and disciplinary action form this is if a foreman's having trouble with uh, someone on site, they're going to fill this out. They're going to send that over to me and then I'm going to take the next step from there. Inventory check in and check out form. Date checked out, item, date checked back in, return condition. Simple stuff. Company scorecard. This has uh, been a good one. So. Project, foreman name, date. Um, how was the scheduled time frame for completing the project? Too much time, not enough time, correct amount of time. Equipment, did everything work the way it was supposed to? Do we have sprayers that malfunction, anything like that? Paint, were there any issues with the paint order? Uh, maybe we didn't order enough paint. Yes, did not order enough paint. If we get enough of these that say yes, did not order enough paint, that's gonna be a problem, right? Trips to the store, do you have to make multiple trips to the store or just one? Yes, multiple trips. We ran out of this on Monday, this on Tuesday, this on Wednesday, this on Thursday. So for a while when we were doing like, uh, I don't know, we had 35 employees. We had a runner that was like a six hour a day person to do all of our trip store running, collecting checks, dropping off checks. And that person I paid, I don't know, 16 bucks an hour. And plus they use company vehicle. So the 16 bucks an hour um, over a week, uh, what was that? Times six. So it cost $480 plus some taxes, um, some workers comp, let's say 600 bucks a week. Um, if my guys are going to the store four times a week, you know, every morning because they forgot something, uh, times, I don't know, with 35 employees, we're probably doing 10 projects at a time. So that becomes a lot of trips to the store. And if it's a three man crew, one person leaves to the store, the other two guys are not working as much. I mean, it just becomes so expensive to have trips to the store all the time. And so I just like to keep track of this to see if this one gets out of control and we're doing multiple trips to the store. It's great that the guys will go, but it also costs extra money, uh, it takes away from production time, and it's just really manageable. We shouldn't have to do multiple trips to the store. Client expectations. Were there any issues between scope of work and what the client thought we were doing? So this happens from time to time where client thinks we're supposed to paint these doors, they're not on our list. What do we do? This is more to keep my estimator in line and project manager. So if we're getting a bunch of yeses on this, client expectations are always different than what our scope is, that's a problem. So we either need to clarify more with the estimator, we need to clarify maybe with a phone call with the client, review the scope again before we start the project. But this just gives us feedback. If we get a bunch of yeses anywhere in here, a bunch of noes anywhere in here, we start to get patterns and then we can act on those. Employee scorecard. This is our foreman fills this out. Um, you know, any superstars, performance, anyone underperform, timelines, any problems, people showing up on time or leaving early. Preparedness, is anybody showing up with no tools? Maybe someone's showing up with no tools every day and they're asking to borrow stuff all the time. Uh, that's a problem and I need to figure it out. Client scorecard, this is my favorite one. Um, client courteous to everybody on the team, yes or no, describe timeliness, did client open up for us on time? Sometimes their clients are late, you know, opening up. They don't open up till 8.15 or 8.20 and we're all sitting outside waiting. Uh, preparedness, is a client 
you know, constantly pushing us around. Well, you can't work in here yet. We're not ready for you to do that yet. Um, then our client rating. This I don't do a lot with right now. Um, if a client is scoring low on this list, that is a problem for me. And I may or may not discuss that with them. Kind of depends how we leave the project. If a client scores high on this, um, I'll usually let them know. You know, hey, we do a client scorecard and the guys give you a really high rating. Just wanted to let you know that. Um, thank you so much for being a great person to work for. And that's kind of valuable. You know, there's some value in that. I think they feel a little bit proud that they got a high rating from people that worked on their home. Uh, sometimes people, if they're in this low score rating after a project, if it's uh, going sideways or usually if it's that low, there's some kind of a problem. And I will have a conversation with people after the fact and say, look, we do a client scorecard and uh, you guys scored a, a two out of 10 or a three out of 10. And, you know, and then I'll give reasons. You were not prepared for us. You were not opening up on time for us. You were pushing us around different parts of the house. You were not courteous. Um, and usually at that point, if I'm having that conversation, things are, I'm not looking for a referral out of that or a repeat project. Here's employment application. These are good to have around just no matter what, if someone wants to fill out an application, even if we're not hiring at the moment, we still want to get an application. We want to get people. Uh, we keep a spreadsheet that has uh, just tons of people that have applied before for a painting job. We have notes on what they do, how long they've been in painting, and then we can pull from there if we need to. The emergency medical plan. Um, that's it. That's kind of what I started with. So with this thing folds out, I'll send some pictures or maybe a video of what my packet looks like and how I place the order. I just order through Staples. It's super easy to do. Actually, I ordered through Office Depot, I think, last time. But super easy to do. I don't recall the exact price. I want to say it was like six bucks per folder, something like that. But completely worth it. I mean, just to be a little more organized, a little more direction, to kind of be on top of things.